PTC Creo Parametric 3.0, Lesson 2, Part 3. We're going to cover map keys in this last portion. I actually did close my T-nut and then brought it up again. It's in its triometric form here. And if you notice that the shading is just with the surfaces, not edge. So if we look up here, we'll see that it's under shading. It's not selected with edges. And what we're going to do is build a map key. So File, Options, and click on Environment, and Map Keys. So bring up a dialog, and it's going to be a new map key. Move these over so we can see them. It's giving me F2 as the option here. I think in the book it says F3. And we will call this Display. It's the name. And the description, I'll just put something sister, change display. And then I'm going to click on record. Now anything I do is going to be input into a, a sequence that I can initiate with just one F key or with a um, icon, with the button, if I put it up in the ribbon. So what we're going to just do is we're going to just say change some of the options in the model display. We'll start off with that. And if we look down here, let's change it to isometric. Shade with very small surfaces. This helps if you have a, a complex model. If you don't have this checked, you'll sh it'll show a little holes in the shading. Of course, anything we change here is going to slow down the system uh, because it's going to have more requirements for the graphics card. See what else we got on here. We'll leave those alone. Edge display. Let's go with um, shade with edges. Very high. Again, this is going to slow down the system a little bit. Dimmed. And let's show the datum tags. And go down a little bit farther and see what else we got. Don't want to show the tolerances. So selection. How about sketcher? Here, let's change it to uh, three decimal places. And what else can we do? Snapping sensitivity, I have very high. We don't want to turn on the grid or anything like that right now. So it looks like pretty much is everything that we want. Click on assembly and see what the choices are. And click OK. And we're going to click on, well, we can click on yes to save these, or we can click on no and not save them, just use them in this particular session. Whatever it says in the book, do that. And for my purposes, I'm not going to save this. And you'll notice it did change everything already. Put the edges, increase the quality, and put it into isometric. Now, we could continue on with something else. Um, Trying to think, let's go to the view command and see what it does. It looks like I did not check on the point tags. Let's turn that on. And that's pretty much all. The only thing we want to do so far. We don't have a coordinate system on this model for some unknown reason. When I modeled it, they did not put one on, which is very odd. All right, so I'm going to click on Stop. This will be a very short one. If you follow the steps in the book, not what's going on here. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to ask, do I want to save all the map keys or just the change? I only have one map key. So I can just select either one of these. And you can see I have one called Creo Textbook. This is the one you're going to use because this has already been done once before. So I've got it saved. I'm just going to type in some other name just for now, just to give it a unique name. And this means you can bring it up later, and you can open up and import these. You don't have to reset things if you're on another system. You can actually email yourself this little file, this config.pro file with a new name, and then you can use it in any system, um, any computer you're working on with the uh, PTC Creo. I'm going to click OK. And it looks like I can close this one. 
and let's go to file options and let's click on environment again we have our map keys let's go down to um, customize ribbon let's see what we get as an option here and over here let's click on map keys to see if the map key is there and it is so this map key we're going to want to use and we're going to put it in the production tab so we're going to add it and here it is now what we want to do is take a look at that so we want to modify it and we can edit the button I think you can get it also by just right mouse button no nope, you can't so let's go modify edit and it gave us one as a, as a uh, default and we can make this into anything we want we don't have to use what they give us um, don't want to get too concerned with it but let's just paint in a few things and make it look a little bit different whatever you can make this anything you want you can erase it redo it I don't want to spend too much time do it and click OK now if we wanted to we could actually have gone in and chosen a different one and we do that it'll give us a huge palette and of course we could go and change that one also so any of these could be used as the basis for the start and then we could alter them by editing the button close okay and if we go into our production tab now we have display now one of the things that happened already is that all this has been changed because when we did the key we applied it and uh, with the map key and it already changed it but if you would have brought up a brand new part or a different part and none of these things are a brand new session and you click display then it will initiate all those commands for you so for instance let's see if we can change this we'll change this to hidden line um, let's go back over to our options and model display and put this one back into triometric um, I won't bother to change any of those no and up here let's turn everything off like so and now you can hit F2 or we could go into production again and click on the icon so F2 now you're going to say well that doesn't look like an isometric it's isometric from the last position so if you select control D or you come up here to the save views and you click on standard orientation it'll give you that and it's a little bit interesting because it did not turn on all my buttons and I thought it would hmm. in fact it turned all of them off for some reason so I must not have selected the right thing because I expected all of these to go on and if we went over and looked at our options customize rib look at the options let's look at the configuration uh, model display by the way I normally set this to 50 but again this is really going to slow down the system and I do that for capturing purposes display well see it did change these so these were initiated correctly and I thought these way because it says show the day item play so I'm not quite sure why it turned them off so again I'm gonna turn them all off to start off with and see what happens and hit F2 and control D and it still didn't turn them back on so I'm going to turn them physically on and remember you can go over here we've expanded this out so it shows everything so our graphics toolbar has more on it than normal obviously you can also just work with it in this particular way rather than having to have these all on here so this becomes a little bit redundant to have all these display items on this 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 okay 
point display. And we could also click on res reset to default. And if we did that, we'd have a lot less up there. But we still have the drop down that will give us the option of turning this on and off. If all the steps in the book, you'll get some idea of, of the options that are available for setting up a map key. But you can set up a map key to do a lot of different things. Um, you don't have to just do what's in the book. You can create another map key uh, and put it in your production or put it someplace else. And try to try to initiate like a, a variety of different types of commands. If they require you to input something from the model in a map key, makes it a little bit different. Uh, it's better to stick maybe at first with stuff that um, with just visual, in other words, changing views, uh, maybe trying changing the colors or appearances, but not necessarily uh, inputting geometry. That would be better with a trail file, which is a little bit different. This concludes lesson two.